Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of World Cup qualification. I'm trying something differently now in a kind of a new perspective. I want to see how this works out for me. Slightly new setup. I have a little stand so uh, any feedback is welcome on that. I just thought I'll try it this way. Um, World Cup qualifying. We have two more teams qualified uh, from uh, from um, be, uh, before uh, the winter break and I'm wearing one of these which is Korea and the other one is up there yes Iran is also qualified um, it is a kind of a uh, international break that I honestly didn't have too much uh, attention on due to the fact that a it was the AFCON b there were no European teams and so uh, my viewing of this is a little bit less however Fortunately, the leagues did take a break, so I could always check results and watch the occasional highlights, which was uh, kind of interesting uh, there. What I want to uh, do is, like the last time I did kind of a uh, World Cup qualifying outside of Europe edition, uh, I want to run through the regions and I want to go more or less uh, South America, North, in the Americas, Africa, and then we go uh, to the East and see where things are, what is still to play for. You will see, of course, the chances of the individual teams qualifying and what are key matchups that will be coming up. Um, I did this video already uh, yesterday and then I realized I had a mistake in um, the qualifying process where I thought that Asia actually gets uh, five and a half spots. No, they only have four and a half spots uh, plus Qatar. So yeah, in a sense, they could have uh, six, but I guess they decided to take one uh, away from them because you have already cut her there, which has actually quite some implications on the qualifying chances uh, of especially two nations that are very near and dear to, to my heart, which is the one Australia and the one over here, Peru. Uh, I'm also, again, I'm quite proud of that I can actually fill this in and more teams are coming. My goal is, of course, to have a jersey for every team that is at the World Cup. Enough of me blabbling about uh, my collection and, and, and so on. There are other videos for that and we'll start in South America where um, we had Brazil and Argentina already qualified from, from before. Brazil more or less uh, will win this uh, stage. I actually don't, don't think that the Brazil-Argentina uh, match that was call, called off due to, you know, uh, some players, uh, Argentine players being pulled off from the authorities. I actually don't think this will be played in many ways. Um, but uh, we have Ecuador getting a vital, vital point um, in Peru, which more or less secures them at least into the continental playoff and they are on the cusp of qualification. And if you look at the upcoming fixtures, um, they have to play at Paraguay, where they probably can get the point that they need. Um, and then uh, they have a home game against Argentina, which is maybe not what they are look, looking forward to. But what plays very well into Ecuador's cards is that Peru actually had a big chance of going in a very good position but then they play only 1-1 one, one against Ecuador at home where they actually found themselves down very uh, early on and Flores uh, equalized. A win would have put Peru in a very very comfortable position. Peru who had beaten the team that actually we should talk a lot about Colombia who had not scored I think now in six games in a row or something like that. They lost at home to Peru basically eliminating Colombia from uh, contention for this last World Cup spots. I mean, they need a minor miracle with having uh, two points behind per per Peru. Uh, no, not two points, four points behind Peru. Then there's Chile in the mix as well. They need a minor miracle if they actually want to make it uh, to uh, at least the intercontinental playoff. So uh, Colombia really not looking good. If you don't score goals, you have no chance. And, you know, 2 one losses to Peru and Argentina, especially the one to Peru, definitely hurts. Uh, and that actually, combined with the draw from Peru against Ecuador, allowed Uruguay to suddenly be in a really good position. I mean, I uh, gotta say, winning a Paraguay and then winning uh, against Venezuela was probably expected, but suddenly Uruguay is sitting in right in the sweet spot. And then there's the big game come, coming up. I think it is more or less between Uruguay and Peru with small chances for Chile, but I think it's between Euro, Uruguay and Peru uh, and they are meeting in the next round uh, in Montevideo. Uh, what will play a little bit in Peru's favor, maybe a draw could actually work for Peru because Peru has a home game against Paraguay, whereas Uruguay has to go to Chile with something to play for. So um, 
One can see. I think the winner of that one, especially if it's Uruguay, but I think also Peru, the winner of this match will go on and qualify for the direct spot. Uruguay in the driver's seat, and we, uh, we th thought this is not going to happen. I mean, they got rid of Tata Tabares and uh, a bit of a upheaval there. But seemingly it is working. And in a way, you want to have Uruguay the World World Cup. Um, so, want to point that out. Moving over to the next confederation, uh, we of course have to talk about CONCACAF, the craziest uh, World Cup qualifying in CONCACAF, to me is almost the craziest. Yes, South America has, you have um, also all the climate zones and you have the high altitude and so on, but those nations are so often playing against each other. Other and there is kind of you know Argentina and Brazil are very dom very dom dominant and can actually deal with most of these conditions most of the time. In Concacaf we have of course the big two which have an internal war of climates as well. The U.S. doesn't want to play in uh, the Azteca any anymore, so they have been offering for years. You know, if you don't play your game against the U.S. in the at the Azteca, we may actually put our home game more in California and so on, and you know. Uh, or in, you know, in nicer uh, climbs and not playing Columbus as we usually do or in some other cold weather climate. Of course, Mexico doesn't want to give up the advantage. Although, is it an advantage anymore? Because as long as the Mexican players were all playing in the Mexican league, they were used to these conditions. Now that most of the good Mexican players are actually playing in Europe, they're not used to those conditions any, any, anymore. And it shows because the Mexican qualification has been a rather rough uh, affair in many cases. However, as you can see, although they sit only in third, uh, it's rather safe that Mexico will qualify, I would say. Same thing goes for the United States, who basically made the most boneheaded decision. I mean, the US qualifying was rather up and down. I mean, you had a um, win against El Salvador, followed by a loss to Canada, more on Canada in a little bit. And then, um, in order to make sure that um, the, you're not drowned out by the Honduran crowd and to really have an advantage, the U.S. decided to play in Minnesota against Honduras at minus 16 degrees Celsius and plus wind chill. Conditions that are not made for playing soccer uh, and s that no one can call this off is to me, uh, I mean, there was a health warning for the population of the Twin Cities uh, to, not play, uh, to not go out in this country. They're playing a, a game there. And uh, I think two Honduran players had to come, come off uh, with threat of hypothermia. And I'm actually thinking, you know, if, let's say, the roles were reversed, or if Canada is doing it, Canada is an outsider, the U.S. are arguably the best, if not the second best team, but I would argue are, are, are at the moment by pure squad, the U.S. are the best team in CONCACAF. As the best team, get the best conditions to play them off the park, because bad conditions don't do you anything it doesn't give you an advantage really because uh, the better 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 team plays better on a better surface and uh be damned that you might have many hondurans there uh i don't get it i don't get it and you know you don't have to play it in florida or whatever you could play it, let's say um chicago or denver it's still cold enough there but not in minnesota no well, chicago more is actually as bad as uh, you know Denver, uh, you know, some, 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 some there of Philadelphia, uh, for crying out loud. It just, it's one of the most boneheaded de de decisions. And one that actually, uh, despite me, always, you know, I've lived in the, in the States, so I have some sympathy for them. Uh, but this is something, some, some, where, 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 where I think this is just so idiotic and makes me go a little bit against uh, the country that hosted me for 10 years. And so the big story, of course, is Canada. Three wins and with an absolute qualifying. I think they need only one more win. And of course, they had the big win against the United States uh, on a plastic pitch. And you know, for Canada, I don't have as much problem because Canada has no other choice. Yes, now nah, maybe they have another choice. You could play in Vancouver where the uh, climate is definitely more temperate than if you play, uh, I think they played in Hamilton on a plastic pitch against America. But you know, treat the Americans with their own medicine. In a way, so yeah, so uh, that takes care of uh, uh, Canada. Took care of the United States rather easily. Bullet them around, boo, uh, over uh, rather uh, convincing win. A poor showing by the by the U.S. And then uh, they beat also, I think, El Salvador away from home. Yes, um, with please watch the highlights. The first goal for Canada is just one of those. Uh, I think. 
uh, it's an acute angle. He hits the post from that. It comes back to him, and then uh, I think from the head it uh, goes into the goal. And uh, you know the defending was also not quite there. So those three nations, all the ones in the north, are more or less qualified. Canada for sure through, and I think the United States and Mexico, although they're meeting uh, next, also look good. So it's all between Panama and Cal 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 Costa Rica for the playoff spot. Uh, which could be vital because as we see they will play against uh, the OFC, so Oceania uh, a, a winner, so there's a very li very likely playoff spot, uh, a World Cup spot lined up for you and Costa Rica has been making up ground. Uh, if I look at the upcoming, I mean call Costa Rica beat Panama uh, to get within, uh, within there, they have to play now at home to Canada which might be a little bit hard where Panama play Honduras, that could prove already deciding but then Costa Rica is El Salvador um, and Panama has to play against the United States, so uh, it undoes the whole thing anymore. And then Costa Rica has to play the United States with some, and um, hopefully, and, and they're hoping that the states are um, qualified. And Panama has to play against Canada, so uh, it's a really, really, really tight race there. Going over to Africa, where we have now the draw for the final round. Um, a quick reminder here, uh, which teams made it out of the second round. We had Algeria, um, then Tunisia, Nigeria and Cameroon beating in the last uh, match the, uh, the Ivory Coast or Cote d'Ivoire. Then Mali in a rather easy, easy group. Egypt uh, also making it rather easy through Ghana by a hair against South Africa and a very contentious penalty call. Senegal easing through and then Morocco and the DRC also qual uh, qualified. And um, the last time I talked about it, it was not clear how the qualification process will, uh, the draw process will go. It was kind of a rumor there will be an open draw. Then they said, okay, let's seat the teams, the top five teams. Uh, from uh, the FIFA ranking, which means that Senegal, Algeria, Nigeria, Morocco and Tunisia were the seeded teams. And then we got a draw with loaded matchups, I gotta say. Egypt against Senegal. Only one of the two Liverpool stars will be at the World Cup. And this is the replay of the AFCON final. So they meet now in the AFCON final, the next time they meet again uh, it's a rather, rather tough, tough draw. This is the marquee matchup, and I don't know. Uh, they play with Ian you know, on 24th and the 29th, roughly. It might be shift, uh, shift, shift around, but this is a major matchup. Senegal, of course, are the favorites, as they are for the FCOM, but it's not an easy draw. I will say that Egypt has a very solid team. The second matchup, Cameroon, Algeria. Yes, Algeria now. Uh, disappointed at the FCON, but to be honest, Al Al Algeria is one of the uh, most solid teams. Cameroon is one of the biggest teams in Africa. Another major matchup. Algeria give, give, give them the advantage. Now, I think that Ghana and Nigeria is not as close as uh, the ratings suggest because Ghana at the moment is in real, real trouble. Uh, so I would actually think that Nigeria is going through, but still this is almost a very local rivalry between two English-speaking West African nations. The other two take a little bit of a backseat. I think Morocco is, is really smiling because they are playing against the DRC is probably was the easiest draw for them. And then Mali, Tunisia, uh, you know, you know how, how much I like Mali because of their nice churches. I would love to see them in World Cup, but then Tunisia is maybe the North African team that I do like uh, best. Tunisia definitely having an advantage there, but they just played at the FCON where Mali beat Tunisia. So, you know, also we got a little preview. This is also a very, very tight matchup, but I think with the second home game, it might be an advantage Tunisia there. But boy, is that draw, um, yeah, incendious in almost the way. I mean, Egypt, Senegal, that's not something you want to have. Going over to Asia, um, unfortunately, uh, from, uh, from, from my side, a little bit of an overlooked region, uh, which I think there's still a lot of stuff, interesting stuff in there. Iran qualified with a 2-0 win over Iraq uh, at the beginning of this international break and then was swiftly followed by South Korea, who also first recorded a win over Lebanon and then uh, uh, beat Syria away away from home, no, no one away from, I, I, I don't know where in this jersey that also qual 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 qualified. So those two are through, but we knew that already before the stage that uh, those two will very likely qualify. Now for the last qualifying spot, the uh, UAE are in the top position there with Lebanon and Iraq having just uh, slim chances uh, of making it in there. Um, the other group is way more open. We had the big win of Japan over Saudi Saud, Saud Arabia to pull, to give actually everyone a chance uh, there. However, what does Australia do then? 
they have they only played a 2-2 draw against Oman, basically ruining their chances of really qualifying directly from uh, from this group. Uh, so Saudi Arabia and Japan looking uh, like the two teams to qualify from there, and then Australia would have to play a uh, playoff against the UAE, which they probably will, uh, I would favor them to win. However, next up. You have to play against the fifth place team from Concombo, where we said this is Uruguay, Peru, Chile, or Colombia. That's a tough draw, and I have to say this 2 2 draw against Oman for Australia ruined more or less their chance of qualifying for the World Cup. Um, we have to get used to that. All Australia, who have been there now since 2006 at every single World Cup, Australia might not be there, uh, which hurts. Little literal to say, uh, but yeah, we have Iran saw, uh, Iran saw, South Korea saw, Saudi Arabia and Japan, uh, traditional powers from the Asian region. And then we'll see uh, whether uh, any of the other teams can make it past the South uh, American opponent. I gotta say, also the intercontinental playoff draw was a rather tough one. And I was thinking, shouldn't they do a double elimination in a way that, you know, you have uh, uh, the way the uh, the two semifinals um, then the, you have the winner play for a direct di a direct spot and then you have a kind of, a kind of um, third place in a way matchup and then the win the loser of the final and then for the last spot I think it would be a fairer way of getting there than uh, having it just di direct because I don't find it fair that Oceania has to play Con uh, Concacaf. And that the two arguably the two stronger confederations play against each other uh, with common ball with South America and Asia. Speaking of uh, Oceania, yeah, they have a very. They finally can play. They will play in Qatar, and you know a lot of uh, teams had uh, a few teams had to withdraw because of COVID and Tonga because of you know volcano and so on. Uh, a horrible thing happened. If you haven't seen this, you've seen the pictures. Look that of that one up. Uh, so I shouldn't uh, glance over that. But they will play in Qatar now, a mini tournament. Uh, two groups of four, it sounds very exotic. New Zealand, of course, the favorite, although my model uh, gives them only a 30% chance of making it to the uh, intercontinental playoff, which to me seems a little bit low, but you know, the ratings are kind of closer together because for the lower teams, they're not as uh, discerning as for the higher teams, I gotta say. So maybe this is a little bit skewed there. Um, the groups look really fun and uh, while I would love to see New Zealand at the World Cup, don't get, 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 get me wrong, it's always nice to have uh, New Zealand there. Um, when I look at some of those uh, nations like Solomon Islands or Fiji or New Caledonia, and since I want to have a jersey for every team, they would be so much fun to get one of these uh, nations. Of course, I should get New Zealand uh, as well. And then they, the winner of them will play against the fourth place team from CONCACAF, who, yeah, I would favor the CONCACAF team there. Although I gotta say, New Zealand gave Peru a really hard fight uh, last time around. In any case, this was it for me. A long video on World, World, World Cup qual qualifying. Please let me know who do you think will qual qualify. How do you like the chances of certain teams that I've been talking about? I actually have to say, um, while most of the qualifying groups are already, already decided, uh, the focus for me in March will definitely be on Europe, of course, because I can see that that Austria is involved, blah, blah, blah. And very, 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 very much in Africa, because uh, those are head to heads. But I'll be interested to see all the other things as well. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please let me know how you like the new setup or if uh, if you prefer the old one where I just move the camera a little bit over. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so that you're updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.